All right, here we go. What a way to start the Fox schedule. Tomorrow, Rams, six and a half, 49 at home against the Vikings. The Rams are kicking ass and taking names. 3-0 and straight up and 3-0 and ATS. They are 2-1 to one to win the Super Bowl here at the Westgate in Vegas. Unbelievable. They took a $50,000 bet earlier in the week on the Rams to win the Super Bowl, and I think it was 25000 to win the NFC. No Tlaib, no Peters. A big deal. The Vikings get Cook back, but I'll ask you, Teddy. The Bills, as 17-point dogs, dominated that game, won by 21, and the Vikings couldn't move the ball at home, Teddy. Yeah, that's the scary thing. I mean, there's a lot of scary things to talk about for Minnesota right now. We'll get to L.A. in a minute. But for the Vikings, okay, you fall asleep early. You know, Buffalo comes in and punches you in the mouth. You're, you're down a couple scores. You expect good teams to dig deep in that spot. And you know what the Vikings did last week? Down 10 nothing, then it's 17 nothing, then it's 24 nothing. There's no comeback. There's no digging deep. They had nothing in the tank. Now. It's a short week. They're traveling across the country. They had nothing in the tank on Sunday. And I'm trying to think, when's the last time I saw Minnesota play a good game? Well, gee, right. you know, they didn't dominate in week one. In week two, they're very, very lucky. And I had, uh, I had Minnesota in week one against San Fran. I was lucky to catch that ticket, flat out. They were not the right side. Uh, in week two, if it wasn't for Cousins squeaking a ball into the double coverage in a window that's about this big, they lose that game in regulation, 29-21 uh, to Green Bay. I mean, literally, Cousins made a crazy throw. Probably wasn't wow. a, a well-advised throw. And it got in there somehow. Oh, the Vikings are fine. You know, so they're supposed to lose that game. And then last week, a no-show against Buffalo. I've got my concerns about Minnesota right now. And it starts, as you mentioned. Yeah, they got Dalvin Cook back this week. Doesn't matter if the offensive line can't protect the quarterback and can't punch right. holes uh, for the running backs. And that Vikings offensive line has been flat out weak in early season play. If it stays weak, they can get blown out on Thursday night. It wouldn't shock me in the slightest because yep. uh, when you look at the Rams, this team is scary, Polly, downright scary. They'll kill you and then they'll go to work on you, right? Ocean's 11 line. Uh, the, you, know, it's a, you have to ask the question, are the Vikings any good? You're right. I watched that entire game week one. Kittle dropped a touchdown wide open. Morris fumbled at the two-yard line. And on the pick six, the receiver ran the wrong route. And the Packers, we know, appear to be a bit of a fraud as they couldn't beat the Redskins, got carved up by Alex Smith and needed a miracle to beat the Bears. So that, that's the tie. And then what happened against Buffalo? You got the Everson Griffin debacle, too, about he's jumping to mental health evaluation. They're taking him to the hospital. He jumps out of the ambulance. You got that scenario going on as well. Cook will help him. They haven't even tried to run the ball the last two weeks either. And he's right, they couldn't protect Cousins. As far as the Rams, well, the Vikings look to pass and throw on them, but you got to worry about Donald and Sue protecting Cousins as well. And you got Thielen and Diggs to do some damage, maybe. It's a huge loss now with no Tlaib and Peters. But can the Vikings, and the defense has been a major disappointment too, can the Josh Allen move the ball on them? Can they slow down Goff and Gurley and Cooks and Woods and all these weapons that the Rams have in Cup? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the Rams are a team that I have no interest in stepping in front of right now. I really don't. And if I'm playing this game, I can only look at the Rams side because, A, yep. I'm not convinced the Vikings are that good, and, B, I am convinced the Rams are that good. And when you're talking about these Thursday night games with the travel situation, it's very difficult for the road team. And we've seen that already on multiple occasions uh, this season where, you know— <laughs> Uh, you know, the rough starts or rough finishes. The Jets had the rough finish uh, the previous week. It was the Ravens with the rough start. But we got to talk about Peters and Tlaib here because when you start talking about, hey, we're going to lay six and a half and this line looks like it's going to seven. It might go to seven uh, by kickoff. And oh, by the way, the team catching points is playing against an opponent with not one, but two former pro bowlers at cornerback who are going to be sitting this week that's a concern. A, it leaves the back door open for Minnesota if they fall behind. And B, when you talk about that Vikings passing game, it's the only part of their offense that has worked so far. And for all the success that the Rams have had this season, they haven't faced a defense like Minnesota's yet. I agree. The Vikings defense yeah. has been a minor disappointment. I would say they've been good, not great. We'll see what the Rams offense can do against at least a good defense. Uh, maybe not a great one. Fascinating game, Paul. Really is. But 
as of this yeah. t- time, I don't have a wager. If I'm playing, I could only lay, but uh, I'm not interested in uh, LA in yeah. this price range. It can be both. You can have a uh, good team. You can be an excellent team, but to play a soft schedule early. And the Rams have beat the Raiders, Arizona, but the Chargers are good. I think the Chargers are going to be a 9-10 win team, and they took them out as well. Like the show? Help us keep the lights on. Please make sure to comment, share, and subscribe to all the Sportsbook Review videos. Thanks so much. Best of luck. Enjoy the game.